touch the real fabric, touch the fake fabric. We're talking fabric today. Full disclosure, this is not purely substance designer. Please don't go just yet. I just took a simple cloth sim here. So I built a plane, simmed it over a sphere, quick and dirty. There is stuff to talk about here. Some of these folds are geometry, but most of this texture is all just created in Substance Designer. So I'm just gonna turn it off quickly, turn off my tiling texture, and you can see what this looks like without any of the cool extras. Pretty boring. So this is just, a, this is just the geometry and the mesh normals. So there's nothing fancy about this at all. It makes a huge difference to add just this tiling texture we built. So we're gonna go into that today, how to create these kind of big to medium size texture folds for your cloth material, as well as all these tiny little micro bips and bobs here. And then we will have a small discussion about this weave micro detail, that that part's also a subject for a later video. But let's get making some fabric. Let's get to the graph. So hopping right in, what a shocker. I'm picking a very saturated color that's pinky purple. It's sort of my thing. Uh, me try not to pick a purple or teal color challenge 2023 difficulty and improbable. I just like this kind of stuff. You make it just like that. Well, you know, let's keep it a little bit more purple. So I also have the forbidden half metal value here. This isn't technically correct. I don't like people to be using this because I'm trying to model that like satin looking material, but I'm doing that in substance designer, which probably isn't the best idea. In a game application, you would want to do this kind of thing in the shading model, like build yourself a shader that has that anisotropy in it and actually behaves like silk or satin. I'm just a designer looking for that colored highlight, that colored specular highlight. So I'm okay with it now, just so it gives us something pretty to look at. That's purple. Then I have some basic setups. We'll have some AO and plugged in stuff that we always have plugged into height as well. So let's make some quick folds. And this is dead simple, this first method we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna make a bunch of Gaussian spots. You can switch this side mode to size. I don't like using the interstice mode. We'll talk about that more in the tile generation video. But I'm just gonna set these horizontally to be much longer than they are tall. So something like eight and probably even shorter, something like that for now. Add some position random, some rotation random. Luminance random, sorry, the darker ones will be deeper down. There'll be a lower wrinkle. The tall ones will get a bit, or the white ones will get a bit taller. And I'm going to set this to max, so the brighter of two values shows through. And let's just try that. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of them, so we're going to mask out a bunch. So I'm going to go up to the tile generator's random mask property and turn this up a bunch just to cull out a whole whack of them. And you know, it's funny, this is actually already like not bad. To be honest, it's okay. We don't like these intersections, we can fix that. And something to keep in mind though, is that the tightness of these peaks and valleys is really gonna help determine what type of cloth you're modeling. Right, because if you have something light like satin or silk or kind of what this is, or like a chiffon or a lace, you'd expect it to come to like really short, quick peaks. They should curve in really, really rapidly to a really sharp peak just because the fabric is light like that. Whereas, you know, like a lot of the fabrics in the intro video, if you have it heavier, like a t-shirt or a duvet cover, certainly, you'd expect to have much larger wrinkles that don't come to as much of a peak. They sort of cave off to one end or slowly round up. So you can do a lot of um, defining what type of material or cloth you're making using just how tightly these join up to each other. So I'm gonna blur these. Partially because I want them to fade, then not to start so abruptly, but also to just merge these, right? Because right now they come to such a sharp point. So I'll put a bit of a blur on them, something like that's probably a good start. And that's a hell of a lot better right away. That looks pretty cool. Um, there's a lot more we can do to this. We could add some random scale to these, so some are bigger than others. I don't like, so I'll, They'll be really random in their length. And I might have to pump this up to compensate. Something like this. Just say that looks good for now. 
I don't like putting a ton of scale random on this one because what I'm going to do is chain together two tile generators, one for these kind of big wrinkles and a second one for much smaller sort of tension lines. So this looks fine for now. Uh, it's, everything's coming through the AO, looks great. What I'm going to do now is bend these a bunch. I want to warp these just because it's a little too straight. Like, and again, it can tell me what you're making, right? If you're making that garbage bag from the intro video, you would want these really, really tight because it's pulled hot over an object. Depending what you're going to want, you may want these to be a bit less tight. So I'm going to grab something like a Gaussian noise and a warp and just push these around a bit. And what I like to do with these warps often, I'll probably put that before the blur. Like that. Cool. And usually what I like to do is have a much bigger warp, like lower frequency, right? So it's zoomed out. And this just does that initial budge. It just moves everything a little bit. So you can see the frequency of the move is very subtle. Right, it's these are all just kind of being bent because this noise is so big. Whereas, you know, if I had this be this Gaussian noise be really, really fine, obviously these are going to get warped like crazy. Even on a low intensity, right? They're just getting super squiggly, which I don't want. So I'm going to do this big one first, and then probably going to do another one. And I'll take a, a duplicate of my Gaussian noise, change the seed to get a different version, and zoom out a bit more, something like this. And I'll chain those warps one after the other. And now this one's a little too intense. So you can see this one is more frequent. But again, they're very subtle linked on top of each other. But I think it adds a lot more of a natural feeling. It might make the big one a bit stronger. Something like that. Blur looks nice. And that gives you a really cool result, I think. And you can always go in and... Um, we have a bunch of controls here. Essentially, our warps are going to control how tight the material is in a big way. Like if I turn these off, the fabric gets much more taut, right? Because you don't have as much of a bend going on. And the blur as well really helps change how tight this feels or how kind of like, you know, like vacuum wrapped the, the material is. Like a garbage bag would be a good example. So I think this is decent. I like having a bit of both worlds there. The real secret sauce here in my mind is using the curve after your blur here or after your auto level. So what the curve does, the way to think about it is that if you have a gradient like this, your curve is just like a levels really, but you have more control. So you can think of this gradient as a ramp, right? Like a skateboard ramp. Although a very boring one right now. Zero at the bottom, one at the top. We're just describing a like a straight incline plane, right? A 45 degree incline. That you can think about it as that line really. That's your original grayscale procession, really. And I can put a node here. Right, so for instance, if I did this, brought this guy down to zero, brought him up to the top, I've created a hump. Right. So this shape, we go from black to white, to black again, is just like this curve. Black to white to black. So I'm going to use this to pinch my cloth wrinkles so that they come to a much tighter peak. Right? Instead of doing this, like a triangle, they're going to warp in. So I'm going to put this curve after the auto level. You'll see, I really like the look of this. We may need to make these bigger to compensate the original wrinkles. So I'll make these a bit bigger. And I might make them a bit longer too, something like 12 or 13. But I really like that. I think you get these, you get this kind of thing, right? This really nice, realistic looking fold there. Something else you might want to try with this is right now they're equal on both sides. Instead of using just that straight Gaussian shape, which is what the tile generator is using right now, we could decide I want to take something like a gradient 
and really carve away at one side of it. Right, so I, I'm basically sloping the gradient. So it's darker here. It would be more obvious if I histogram scan this. Bring this guy up a bit. Like that. And in fact, what I probably will do is just put this to 0.5 and bring the contrast way up. So I'm sloping it off to one direction. You can see that cut there. And this will give you a very different profile. If you plug this into the tile generator instead, right, we'll set our Gaussian input. Instead, we'll use a, whatever our image input is. You can see it really changed it, right? It's longer on one side, shorter on the other now, which can help give a sense of weight to it. But you can play around with different input curves. I like the way this looks, to be honest. I might scale these up a little bit more. I'll just turn this up to like, I think it's long enough. I think we could go a bit thicker, something like that. Cool, and again, so you have a lot of controls and you're right, you can add more wrinkles by turning the random mask down. You make them bigger. Again, we have our two warps here to play with how loose the fabric is instead of it being razor tight. So we can do something like turn that warp up. Probably make it even stronger. Let's put it to like a five. And then same thing here. We can add a bit of the higher frequency warping. Which looks really cool. And I want that normal map to be way stronger. So I'm going to go here. Make this like a 10. So I think that's pretty effective. We can add some smaller micro wrinkles here too. In this case, I would just duplicate him. For these, I'll, for these smaller ones, I'll probably just use my normal Gaussian input, not my custom one. And with these guys, I'm gonna have way more of them. And they're way smaller because I have more of them. A tile generator by default, right? If you have more of them, they get smaller which isn't a behavior I like particularly. That's a video for later. We're going to talk about how to keep that consistent. But I'm going to go here, turn my mask random up a bit because I don't need that many. And then I'm basically going to copy this whole chain, our warps and blurs. Now the warps should be less intense on these because, because they're smaller, the warps have a bigger effect, especially even in terms of their frequency at least. And the blur can also be weaker. Because again, they're smaller, so the blur is comparatively stronger. Then same thing, I'm going to curve this before, because I might want to change this curve. So I'm going to keep two. One for the micro cloth wrinkles, and one for the main cloth wrinkles. And then I'll just screen these in. You can see we can kind of get these micro folds as well. Maybe make them a little less intense. But that can add a lot. And again, there's not really a right or wrong answer for what you should be doing here, because it really depends on what type of fabric you're making. I may make these a bit thinner, actually. So I'll just scale these down a bit. Another thing you can do, which I find pretty helpful, is sometimes it's good to screen them up, but sometimes you actually want to subtract them, because right now we're doing all additive stuff, right? We're it's all popping up. Sometimes we want to actually carve into the surface as well. So I might make another duplicate of this chain. Get a random seed, so we have some different ones. And with this version, same thing, I want to copy that curve. With this version of them, I'm actually going to subtract. Now, subtracting from this doesn't really do us any good, just because we can't subtract from black here. So I'm going to use a level to bring up our, our floor, right? Because our floor, we can't go any lower than zero. So I'm going to bring our floor up a bit by just bringing the level out in. And then I'll subtract. So these guys are actually going to peel away and they don't need to be that intense. Right, so you can get these, the opposite wrinkles add a lot. Right, not only do we pull out, but we also push in, which feels really nice. 
where you get a bit of a variety. And again, because we have that curve, we get these, which again, if you've sculpted cloth before in ZBrush or something, this looks exactly like a damn standard brush. So this is really cool. You can do a lot with this. We built in a lot of controls to here. There's a lot of hooks for changing stuff. This is one method of doing it. This is kind of my preferred one. There are some other cool tricks you can do though. You can actually start from something like a plasma because this is quite fabric looking, you know, like in the intro video, this is sort of like my duvet cover. You would want to invert this because we do want these whites to be the peaks of the fold. So you could try something like this. Obviously this is a little intense and they're quite small. So we'll zoom them out a bit. But this can be a sort of a different kind of interwoven one that I like the look of as well. Again, I would probably want to blur these. Right, because they come to too sharp of a point right now. Same general principle. I want to auto level them because they're quite bright. So this is, I mean, this is already pretty sweet. You can play with the disorder here too if you want to get a different part of it. But where this becomes a bit more convincing is when you mix two of them. So kind of similar to our our, our uh, version one where we have the big folds, the small folds, and the subtractive folds. We can do a very similar thing here. I can make these even bigger. So you could grab this again, zoom this guy out a bit, grab a different seed. I've inverted it again, blurred it again, again, because it's smaller, the blur could be comparatively weaker. Auto level, and then you could do something like max these together. And then you'd want to do another blur. Right, just to smooth out where they intersect. Something like this. Throw an auto level after it to get some range back. And then I would want to do my curves. Right, to try to push these into more of those kind of whipped peaks. I just got desserts on the brain right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about like pavlova and whipped cream based confection for the last couple of days. <laughs> Something like this. You can kind of see what I mean. Even the height map looks like it. This is just a different look. There's also nothing stopping you from combining these two. And I may want to like push some of these down. Like right now, the peaks are kind of the peaks. They're the same intensity everywhere. So I might take something like Again, gauge noise, I just like it for this kind of big scale change. I'm gonna auto level them because the gauge noise by default is quite low range, right? We're missing so much bright and dark values here. So I'm gonna throw an auto level here. And I'll do something like just multiply against this. And really the difference is just this this is all the same height, right? It's all kind of spans the same strata. I want it to have some dips and bobs which the Gaussian noise is kind of the dip and bob king, in my opinion. So I think that feels a lot more natural. So that's another method you could do, depending on what you're trying to do. Like I've done this for like gold foil and all sorts of other kind of interesting things I've done with like a Christmas gift wrapper that I actually made for a friend for Christmas. And you can combine these two. Like there's nothing stopping you from taking this and like subtracting our curve here. Now we would probably want to raise the floor just like we did earlier. And I'm subtracting those little slices. And we'll reroute these. Right, so there's, you can absolutely mix and match these methods. Again, it's really going to depend on what material you're trying to make. I just want to make sure, as always, you guys have as many tools in the toolbox as possible, just so you can address whatever problem might come your way with the cloth. So I like both of these. They're, they have a lot of flexibility, which is always nice. But I'm going to return to these guys for just a moment. We'll leave method two over here for when we publish that graph. So this looks pretty sweet. I think one thing that'd be nice is to add some kind of micro detail to this. And again, it just, 
it depends on what you're making. Again, I know I've said it a million times, but it is just true. I want you guys to just have flexibility here. The go-to for this is this weave generator. Come stock and substance. There's actually some stuff about this I do not like. Um, I don't like that if I, well, usually I like the gap to be a bit bigger. And I don't like that if you blur this, maybe we grab our height map and blur it. It just doesn't, these all kind of mix together here and become pretty confused. Like they merge, which sucks. I have a solution for this. This is where I normally would point to the video where I solve this, but the video's not made yet. It's coming soon, but that's, if you're in the future, if you're two months in the future, it, it's up there. So I'm just going to give myself way more weave here. Tile this way out. And if you like, if you don't like that herringbone, you can turn the weave down, right? So it's an actual, like, I guess a picnic basket. Or this creates that kind of classic stair-stepping herringbone pattern. You can increase even more if you're trying to do like rope fibers or something. But I like this for now. I don't want to blur it. And I'm just going to multiply this over. And we're probably going to need it to be a bit finer still. Now, something like this. And we want way more. So let's give ourselves like 64 by 64. This is probably one of those things that you would want to, in your game engine, like Unreal or whatever, lay over as a separate normal map. Because you can get a really tiny little normal map and tile it just a really high frequency over the whole texture. It stays nice and crisp. It's just like begging. Stuff like this just begs it to be a detail normal. But it adds a lot to our texture. I think this looks pretty cool. A cool trick you can do is warp this based on our cloth, right? So that it actually, right now, it looks like it's sort of pasted on top over our folds, but we can warp this a little so that the fabric pattern sort of reacts to those peaks and valleys underneath. So I'm gonna auto level our folds, maybe blur these a little and use this as a warp. Obviously that's very intense and kind of cool though creating all sorts of interesting Celtic knocks there. But we just want it to go a little, right? This this should be very subtle. But I think you can add a lot. See how it moves away from the peaks? A little goes a long way there. You don't want to overdo it. You could blur it a bit more. And you'd have to turn the warp strength up a little bit to compensate. But I think that can really go a long way towards improving that look. That's really it there. The only last thing I would say is sometimes you might want stuff in like a specific direction, whether you have like, you know, everything coming to a point, in which case you would want to try a separate method where we sort of do the same things we do here, but instead of using tile generators, so we'll pull all these three out, I would use splatter circulars. So for now, let's hop just to this guy. I just skipped to the top without any of our fancy smaller folds. And I'm gonna get a splatter circular. So this guy's a tile generator, but it tiles your objects around in an arc or full ring here. And this is cool because we can make them all drive towards a single point, which depending on what you're making could be what you need. So again, I'm gonna switch these to, well, we'll use our input pattern too, we may as well. And we need to rotate these 90 degrees because right now they're wider this way. So we go this way. Although that'll make this more difficult. So let's not do that. Let's do the rotation first. So we'll rotate the shape 90 degrees, then put it in. Cool. So they're all aligned towards the middle. And then we'll put a bunch of size there. A cool trick you should know here with splatter circular, we're going to get into this in tile generation video, but we should talk about it quick. Notice that these scale out from the center. So if a problem here, it's hard to control because whenever we change the radius, we have to compensate with the size. Just know that 
in the splatter circular or tile generator, this shape is going to scale from the middle. So if we just pre-move this shape so that the bottom of the shape, and I'll turn tiling off here, the bottom of the shape is at the center. This becomes a lot easier to control. You can check whether this is at the center or not pretty easily by using another transform and seeing where it is relative to that point. So I do need to move it up a bit more like that. Right, so now it'll rotate from this point. Look at the difference. Right, if I use a rotate here, like a rotate random, we are in rotation. They all spin from the middle. Whereas if I use this guy, they all spin from their bottoms, right? Because they're rotating always from the center of the texture. You can also change that with a setting on here. We'll do a bigger video on that and we do our 20 quick tile generation trips or whatever I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna spread these out, make these really long. Maybe bring them back in a little. We can add some radius random, sort of pull some in more and push the radius out a bit. Add some size random. Add in rotation. We probably don't want a ton of this. Scale random, same thing. I still think we want these to be a bit longer. We'll plug this in. And you'll see this can be cool if you have everything coming from a point, right? If you've made, I don't know, a heavy crater with folds flying towards it or folds around an object, right? If you have like a, a ball and you want everything to peek up towards it. So for instance, if we put this on a plane, right? And we take a big Gaussian shape and we screen these on top, you get a pretty cool look. And because we're raising that up, make this a bit bigger. That's a little too big. <laughs> big boy, just to like two, or even less, probably like here. This is pretty sweet. We just need to turn our scale up on our displacement. Let's go up here. I just want to display this, displace this plane a bit more. So let's go way higher. And then we can turn the height of our folds down a bit, but let's make this even higher. So we'll turn the screen down. But you can see this is pretty sweet. We can create these kind of peaks. Right, you can really feel like there's something. This is what I did on my tentacle substance, where I wanted the eyeballs to kind of push up out of the goo of the tentacles. This is how I achieved that, these sort of stress lines. I don't know how much I want the curve to be on this one. I think it's a little intense. But I think that works fairly well. The norm map can go up. It's a little weak now. There's something bursting through there, right? It's, it's, it's pretty sweet. And we can add more rings to this if we want. We can add more pattern, right? Make many more wrinkles. We can drop some of them out, right? So add some random dropout. Same thing. Once you're into tile generation, a lot of this will become really familiar because a lot of these settings are very similar, right? Add some random luminance so that some are lower than others. Random mask to drop some out. We'll talk about this more in our discussion on randomness I have planned. But in general, I find oftentimes it makes sense to have way more than I think I need and then get rid of like 90% of them. Turn the random mask way up. Um, there's a good reason for this. I'll explain it in that randomness discussion because I think it's an important one to have. Because I think this feels pretty slick. You can add another ring of them if you want. And you can even scale them by ring number. So that second ring you go to scale, you can scale by ring number, maybe invert that so the other one is smaller. So this second ring is all much, much finer. And so we get these much smaller wrinkles at the top. And yeah, from there you can just 
do the exact same thing we did with the other tile generator. We can layer in these kind of, you know, these are our big directional wrinkles, but we can also lay in some of those random ones we had further down the chain, right? Just like this. It's a little intense, so we'd have to turn our subtraction down. And certainly our screen here has to be weaker. But it adds a lot. So hopefully that get you that gets you guys going. Get some. I'll let you cook. Um, fabric's fun. Uh, this can tackle kind of a wide variety of stuff, and it's pretty quick and cheap. But it's just an interesting way to think about it. I think more cool purple spheres. Fun pink. If the world needs anything. If anything I've learned from today's lesson is that the world needs more cool purple and pink stuff. And I'm here for it. I'm here for it all day, baby. If you watched it this far, thank you so much. Um, we hit a thousand followers already, which is far beyond the pace I thought we would hit. It's very cool. I'm very excited about it. Um, if you like the video, like the video down in the corner. You can hit subscribe so that when the videos you like come out, you can like them. Other things that are new, I have a Patreon now. Uh, enough people bothered me on my DMs, either here or ArtStation, uh, or left comments here in the in the comment section asking to have a Patreon to be able to support the channel. So you asked, you have spoken it into existence. It's now there. The link is in the description. Right now, it's just the ability to support the channel, which again, people have asked for. So I'm very grateful people have even thought about that in the first place. Going forward, if things get, you know, more interesting, like I'll create additional tiers, we'll do stuff like being able to vote on what content's coming next or see the itinerary coming, you know, be able to do different kind of material, all the regular YouTube stuff you're familiar with. Maybe even a tier at some point where we do like a private Discord where, you know, people can share art they're making, share graphs, ask questions, things like that, follow up on the content, create a community around that would be kind of cool. And for now, that's just it. I really appreciate anyone wanting to help me continue to make this stuff because I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Um, and I'll continue doing it as long as it's fun. So it's nice to have that extra support. Other than that, thanks so much, guys. And we will see you soon. So we're just picking a color in here, like a, we'll try like magenta-ish or, or maybe. <laughs> uh, <two. laughs> I'm just never going to be able to get away from these efforts.